is that uh, I'm I'm sorry I'm losing track of who's speaking. Is that that was Don? That Don, was Don. Don Larkin. Yeah, Don, I, I I was uh, working city attorney's office in Palo Alto for many years. So, certainly worked with him right. there. No, we were we were very lucky to uh, to get him. I think. I think so too. Um, oh, well, you get no disagreement from me. He's an awesome guy. I don't know what he's like as a boss, John, but. Um, <laughs> Terrific. Uh, I can't imagine. My that. humble opinion. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was, he was in Southern California. So it was a, it was a pretty substantial move for him. Um, he was running, I think it was the Riverside uh, Utilities at the time and, and uh, decided to relocate back to the Bay Area. So well, he, he still had his house in Willow Glen, so was, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, which, uh, which a lot of times recruiting people to our area, as you know, isn't the easiest thing to do. So we were fortunate that he still had that. <laughs> There's Peyton. Peyton, you're ready to roll? Hi, everybody. Yep, we are ready to start when you are. Great. It's 5.30 right now, but we'll give everybody a couple more minutes before we get started. And so for Peyton and Don, and I think Don, you've been on long enough, you probably figured out Christina is our city manager, if you didn't know, and uh, Don Larkin's our city attorney, Maureen is our engagement director, when Shane's camera's on, it's easy to tell he's our police chief, uh, Edith is our economic development director, there he is, Jennifer is our development services director, although I may have got the title wrong because they tend to change it every two years and I don't always remember. Uh, Dad is the finance director, and Michael Horton is our human resources director. This is this is an all-star cast. Um, we are, uh, you know, we're, we're really pleased to be uh, participating tonight, and it it it's something we we definitely like to do, especially if you're doing this, you know, into the future uh, to to periodically join uh, for a, a segment, and and we're we're starting to see the same sort of activity with a few of the other cities who launch similar efforts and it just seems like such a, a nice way to to connect um don it looks like you have a piano behind you i is that oh you can see that wow yes yes and so i i was thinking that you could entertain our town hall guests before we get started with <laughs> a nice little melody that's a way to win over the crowd I heard that I so I happen to have it on good authority that Don can, in fact, tickle some ivory. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then the, uh, uh, I'm going to embarrass Michael Horta, who has an amazing voice. Well, Michael, maybe you and I can uh, work something up for the second time we do this. Yes, for sure. <laughs> and just to finish, I realized I didn't reintroduce Angie, who you already saw, and she is one of our, our uh, deputy city clerks. And our Jote has joined, and he is an assistant to the city manager. And Chris is my boss, and he's our public services director. All right. All right. Well, why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, welcome to tonight's town hall meeting. Tonight, uh, we, well, we've been doing town halls about twice a month now, typically the second and the fourth Thursdays of each month. We started these at the beginning of COVID as a way to um, communicate and engage with our community. And they have been a great way to touch our community. And before this uh, call officially started, I, our communications and engagement director was talking about our fire community <laughs> meetings and we had over 1200 people on them. And so Zoom is, the, is, is certainly the way to go and, and it's probably going to be the way into our future. Tonight, I'll start off with just, um, just a, a brief, a brief uh, couple remarks about COVID. Um, and really tonight we're focusing in on uh, one specific topic and that is to hear from Silicon Valley Clean Energy. And they are our local community owned electric provider, electricity provider. And so they're going to provide information tonight for us about how we can become more energy resilient in the face of our state's recent rolling blackouts and PG&E's public safety power shutoffs. 
And so uh, I'll make a few remarks and then I'll turn it over to our program administrator, Anthony Ulo, and then he'll introduce our guest tonight from SVCE. All right, so as far as COVID goes, uh, we have not heard yet from the county this week, um, but I believe that it has been about two weeks since we have been in the second tier, and that second tier is the red tier. And uh, more businesses were allowed to open in this tier, um, but we do know that the orders are always the stricter of the state or the county. And with coming out with the red tier, there's three areas where the county is stricter, and that has been with indoor dining, movies inside, as well as indoor gathering. And so we're kind of waiting from the county to find out when they're going to become, you know, in alignment, if you will, with the state. Also, we do know that once we're in the red tier for a period of 14 days, then the schools are allowed to, not required to, but allowed to open. And so I, I do believe that, as a matter of fact, tonight the Morgan Hill Unified School District has a meeting and the topic of their meeting is reopening of the schools and talking about a plan. So I would imagine we'll hear more from the county, I would think maybe tomorrow or early next week. And so those are the only comments I have tonight on COVID, but what we'll do is we'll hear from SVCE and then at the um, end, we'll have any questions and answers uh, for that, for the team. And then we can have just a general Q&A as well. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Program Administrator, Administrator Anthony Ulo, who will introduce our guest from SVCE, Tony. Thanks, Christina. Uh, it's really my pleasure to be the city's staff representative who gets to work with SBCE. And uh, on our city council, our mayor pro tem, uh, Martina, uh, Yvonne Martinez Beltran is the representative on the SBCE board. Uh, and it's just to make sure everyone understands, and I'll probably, unfortunately, probably Don, that means less that you're going to have to say, but uh, just so everyone understands, SBCE, we are a partner of theirs. We, we and other communities essentially own SVCE as a joint powers authority. And since um, we have uh, brought SVCE power into our community, uh, Morgan Hill residents have saved uh, over $1.5 million on their electricity bills, which is uh, $1.5 million that people can spend in other ways, whether it's investing in things or buying things for their house, whatever they want. So it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Don Bray and Peyton Parks. Rather than use their official titles, who it's kind of hard to sometimes understand what that means. Let me just tell you what they do. <laughs> so Don Bray is uh, one of SVCE's essentially original employees. He's been there the, for the duration. And he is the guy that really oversees uh, the customer interaction and, and manages how um, customers, both small and large, are treated to ensure that they have the service that they are requesting and, and everything works well in terms of their power generation. So he's really like a super key person from the customer's perspective. And then he also oversees uh, some of the other initiatives that are really important for SVCE um, and has been a very great guy to work with. Peyton, on the other hand, was not one of the original guys, but he's been there a long time. And um, this is the, I think, third community meeting that Peyton has uh, graced us with his, with his presence in Morgan Hill that I, as, as I can recall. And he is a great guy when it comes to describing things for the community, putting things together, and doing community outreach. He's also quite the poet on the side, although he, that probably won't come up tonight. So um, <laughs> without further ado, uh, Don Bray and Peyton Park from SBC. All right, thanks so much, Tony, and uh, and thank you all. It's a, a pleasure to be here with you tonight. Um, Peyton and I are gonna sort of tag team presentations. So we're gonna bounce back and forth on on a few slides. Um, Tony did a good job of, of introducing SVCE. Um, I'll mm -hmm. provide a few more uh, background details. Um, we, uh, we were officially, uh, launched as an organization in 2016 and began service in 2017. So we've been operating for about four years now. Our original mission, and it remains our mission to this day, is to provide clean, carbon-free electricity at uh, very competitive rates, rates that are better than um, what you would pay if you are a PG&E customer. Um, we now serve about 96% of all customers 
in the 13 um, South Bay communities that we serve. That uh, adds up to about 270,000 commercial and uh, residential electricity customers. Another really important part of our charter is to provide uh, programs and services to help customers migrate or transition off of fossil fuels to clean electricity. And think about that in the context of your home or your, uh, or your, your office building or your, the vehicle you drive. Um, the more that we can move to electricity, uh, clean electricity, the more we reduce GHG emissions um, and the, the greater stand, the stand we take against uh, uh, climate change which uh, I know is on the top of a lot of people's minds, uh, given in particular recent events. Um, Tony mentioned that we're a public agency uh, and that we're a publicly governed. Uh, 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 Council uh, member Yvonne Martinez Beltran is our, uh, is our uh, director um, and we've enjoyed a, a great working relationship with uh, Morgan Hill, uh, with Tony and the other staff members, uh, with the directors that have served us. And um, we're looking forward to a good conversation tonight. Uh, next slide. Jumped ahead of you, Don. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, let's turn it over to you, Peyton, on the uh, the next slide here on how uh, how the CCA functions. Certainly. So, what a lot of people don't realize is that there are two sides to a, an electric utility business. There's uh, the sourcing of the power where it comes from and then the delivery of the power and how it gets to the customer. So SVC operates on the generation side of things, which is responsible for sourcing the power. So we uh, source only from or renewable options, uh, whether that be wind, water, uh, or solar. And then PG&E is our partner in delivering these, this power to the final customer. Now within uh, the realm of green power, there's a lot of options as to how we can set up a carbon-free product. So what we've done is we've divided into um, two different product offerings. Our standard product offering is called Green Start, and this is essentially 50% renewable uh, from wind and solar, and this is 50% uh, from hydropower, which is considered carbon-free rather than renewable in the state of California. Uh, this comes at a 4% discount compared to PG&E's generation rate. And so not only is it cleaner than their power mix, but it helps to save residents and businesses money. We do have a product offering called Green Prime. This is considered an upgraded product, uh, and it does cost a small surcharge of eight tenths of a cent per kilowatt hour, which tends to be about three to five dollars per month for the average resident. But it is 100% renewable from wind and solar and it's third party verified as being so by uh, Center for Resource Solutions Green E program. Since we are a community owned organization, uh, our community is definitely our top priority. Uh, and so we're working to fight, fight climate change by cutting carbon emissions in three specific sectors. Uh, and that's energy procurement, buildings and transportation. Uh, and given that our name is Silicon Valley Clean Energy, uh, the Silicon Valley portion would tell you that innovation and new technologies in this area are incredibly important to us. Uh, so we work hard in supporting and, and fostering new innovation. Uh, and lastly, we like to benefit our community by reinvesting locally. This is a part of our charter. And the way that we do that is by keeping rates competitive. We offer uh, clean energy programs, We've offered scholarship programs and a number of other ways that we reach out and, you know, really touch residents and businesses directly. Now, as far as an impact goes, uh, we've, uh, we've actually reduced carbon emissions for our region, which of course spans Mountain View to Gilroy by 24% from a 2015 baseline. Uh, and this year, given our procurement efforts over the next 20 years, uh, we're already looking at over a billion dollars invested in new renewable energy projects. Uh, now, territory-wide, we've saved $53 million. Uh, and that's savings that goes directly to our residents and businesses, as Tony says. But as an update to his stat of $1.5 million, 
we're actually up to $2.75 million directly back into the pockets of uh, Morgan Hill residents and businesses. Now, as we all know, and the reason why, or at least part of the reason why we're here tonight is because we've had some interesting things happening with weather, which have led to some interesting things happening with our power. And so we're going to talk a little bit about our heat waves. <laughs> so in August and September, uh, we experienced some triple digit temperatures in this area. Uh, I know that specifically on August 15th, I was in Gilroy that day and saw thermometers at 112 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and when these sort of events happen, it triggers um, our grid operator, Kaiso, to issue a flex alert um, that really is trying to get people aware of the situation because these heat waves cause a demand in power that sometimes the grid isn't quite able to handle. And when it's as widespread as it was over these, uh, these last two months when they occurred, uh, the entire Western grid was having high temps, which means that we couldn't necessarily import power that had an abundance uh, from say a cooler area. Uh, what that means is when the grid can't support uh, all of the demand, uh, they issue rolling blackouts <clears throat> uh, to kind of make that decision for us. Luckily, didn't have any outages in Santa Clara County other than some failures that were caused by equipment. Uh, but an important thing to remember is that this is not a renewable energy issue. This is a system-wide issue. Another thing that we hear uh, quite a bit about, especially this time of year leading into the fall after a dry summer, is public safety power shutoffs. So this, of course, is a PG&E program in which they're able to single out specific circuits where they feel that weather events could lead to a, a highly dangerous situation and potentially a wildfire. And the causes that they're looking for are, you know, low humidity, heat, and wind kind of become the perfect storm for disaster. So we've experienced PSPS a couple of times over the past years and have kind of gotten familiar and in 2020, we've seen PG&E working on uh, various improvements to the program. So they're able to better target and sectionalize uh, areas of the grid uh, without having to shut down necessarily such a large swath uh, of customers in order to protect uh, folks in endangered areas. Uh, we're also hoping to see these events be shorter in duration. And improved customer communication has been a a really driving force for them this year behind this program. Uh, it's really important to note that if you haven't logged on to the pg and &E website and signed up for alerts with a current phone number and email, there is a, a web link at the bottom of this slide uh, where you can share your contact information and receive these alerts. Uh, compounding that again, critically important for customers in vulnerable situations who may need uh, electricity for medical, uh, uh, medical devices uh, or refrigeration for medications, uh, susceptibility to heat, etc. So to talk about some of the things that SVCE is doing to uh, combat these events, we're going to pass it back to Tom. All right, let me jump to the, uh, the next slide here. Um, when, when we first started up a few years ago, um, we focused on going out and getting a lot of clean power and getting that on the grid. Um, and then we started working on programs for electrification and the, the built environment and transportation. And really the, the whole notion of resilience has started to, um, started to become uh, in many respects, just as important and objective as, as you know, our clean energy objective. So how do we at the same time try to make the electricity supply more and more reliable? How do we have it that, you know, the power doesn't get shut off at your house in a, in a windstorm or if there's um, a heat storm, let's say, like we had uh, here a few weeks back. So one of the, the things that we're um, going to be advancing with the program that's launching literally next week uh, is um, providing incentives for installation of solar plus storage. 
and we're calling this program Lights On Silicon Valley, and we're teaming with a, a major solar installer, Sunrun, and if you install solar in a battery and then sign up for this grid program, this Lights On Silicon Valley grid program, you, you earn this rebate. Um, so we're really trying to encourage people to do these two things together. And, and what that means is that if the grid does go down, one of the reasons mentioned, um, your lights stay on. Um, it'll help you reduce your energy costs throughout the year because the battery you know, collects solar energy during the day and then allows you to use it in the evening when, when power's more expensive. Um, it also, as, as part of uh, the program that we're involved with, the Slides on Silicon Valley, it, it networks your battery with other batteries on the grid such that um, some of that power can be put back on the grid if it's needed. And, and of course, you're compensated for that, um, you know, like, like you would be if you were pushing solar energy back onto the grid. It's more about the timing. And, and if we can use a, an array of batteries to do this, there's a lot of value to the community and to the grid. It helps us keep the grid up. And so that's the, that's the real essence behind Lights on Silicon Valley. So if you're interested in this, um, you can go to our website today, the, the URL that's shown there. Uh, there's an interest list right now, but the official um, program will open up next week and, and the, the, the true sign up form will be uh, online then. So wanted to make you aware of that. Um, next slide, please. At a community level, we are working with all 13 of our um, our member communities on a, a community-wide resilience program, and we're allocating money, $5 million, across all 13 communities, and based on the, uh, the size of your electric load in your community, um, that allocation's done. So this, I, I don't know the exact number, but it's gonna be at least a few hundred thousand for, for Morgan Hill, uh, will be available for putting in place solar plus storage at critical facilities. Think of a um, community center that you want to have uh, uh, power delivered to under any circumstance, you know, earthquake, uh, outage on the grid, whatnot. If you have to keep that building up, um, this is a, a very effective and, and, and clean way to do it. So um, we are putting funding towards this in, in all of our communities. And that, uh, that money is available as of now. And um, and I know Morgan Hill and other cities are, are working on how to uh, deploy that. Next slide. I'm gonna to touch on some of our uh, longer standing customer programs now. Um, I wanna make you aware of these too in the spirit of, of re resiliency and, and using our clean energy for, um, uh, for emissions reduction there are some interesting things that we have to offer today. If we can go to the next slide, please. Um, so this was something deployed earlier this summer, um, but it's a, an extensive set of online resources that you can look at around uh, uh, maybe buying a, an EV the next time that uh, you need to, to go shopping for a vehicle. So we have a, an online uh, catalog and a lot of comparative tools and such. Uh, it's called EV Assistant. And it's a fun place to browse a lot of new EVs that are out there, over 50 uh, makes and models. And this list is expanding all the time. And I'll, I'll bet you didn't know all the cars that are electric now and what all their capabilities are. It talks about their range, their price. You can compare vehicles versus one another or versus conventional. Uh, internal combustion uh, vehicles. So really interesting application, that's EV Assistant. Uh, the Appliance Assistant allows you to shop for uh, electric appliances in place of gas appliances. Think uh, um, heat pump electric water heaters or heat pump space heaters or uh, induction cooktops. So a lot of information on um, on all electric appliances. And then finally, we have a service um, called Solar Plus Battery Assistant. And this is actually sort of a broader service than what I described uh, with the Sunrun arrangement. Um, you can go here and look for batteries if you already have solar. 
um, or you can look for the, the two things together. This service will get three quotes for you from uh, local uh, service providers um, and, and really help you through the entire process of, of doing your installation work if it's solar plus battery or, or perhaps adding battery to an existing solar array. So the three things together uh, have a lot of information around them. We call the whole, um, the whole site uh, the eHub, which stands for electrification and education and electronic and choose your, choose your other e-words. Um, but uh, it's a, a great resource that we invite you all to take a look at. Next slide. Uh, Peyton, you want to take heat pumps? Absolutely. So I'm actually going to skip back uh, one slide and call attention to the image here because this is something that we've dreamed up and called the future fit home. Uh, so the future fit home is all electric from, you know, the car in the driveway to the appliances that power it, uh, to solar and storage on the roof. And so one of the critical appliances moving towards this future fit home is a heat pump water heater that's efficient and electric. Uh, they work kind of like a refrigerator in reverse, uh, moving heat from the ambient air into your water. Uh, and because they work that way, they're a lot more efficient than the old electric style resistance water heaters. Uh, this is actually the second phase uh, of rebate program that we've offered on these appliances. Uh, and in this phase, we're offering up to $2,000 for a heat pump water heater. Uh, and this is available to anybody. Just about. <laughs> if you replace an existing gas uh, water heater, we'll pay the entire $2,000 rebate. Uh, but if you do have an old electric resistance style water heater, uh, we'll give you $1,000 to, uh, to take advantage of this rebate. Uh, so far, uh, we've got some stats. Only one customer in phase two has been from Morgan Hill, but rest assured, we only have 10 uh, thus far. Uh, so plenty of reservations left for, uh, for folks down here in the South County. Uh, we do definitely uh, consider somebody's economic status as they're qualified through Care Fera for additional funds. And we even allow uh, an additional $1,500 to folks who are looking to upgrade their service panel if they're currently below 200 amps. Uh, the reason for that, of course, being uh, smaller service panels will have a harder time electrifying in other areas of their home. So we want there to be plenty of room within that panel uh, for adding electric dryers, EV chargers, and the like. So if this program interests you at all, uh, you can visit our website uh, slash water dash heating and get a little bit more information. Uh, now, one of the great things about our organization uh, being wide reaching, but still relatively small is that we're fairly nimble. Uh, and so when the county was placed under shelter in place orders in the middle of March, uh, SVCE reacted quickly. And by the board meeting in April, uh, we had reserved $10 million for a couple of different programs that were dedicated to uh, COVID relief. Uh, so the first such uh, program was a three and a half million dollar uh, bill credit program in which we had set aside $100 bill credits to be distributed to every Care Fera customer throughout our service territory. And then additional $250 bill credits uh, for qualifying small businesses. Uh, our next in line is an online contractor training, uh, which is focused on sort of giving electrification concepts. Uh, terminology and technologies to contractors who may have been experiencing uh, a lapse in work, but also then provides that you know, knowledge moving forward uh, to kind of bring these technologies to the marketplace, uh, hoping to further electrify right from the start of somebody having something installed. And then of course, we have the $5 million to support regional resilience, uh, which Don had addressed. Done. Did did we have local statistics on the uh, on the COVID numbers by any chance? Oh, I apologize. I pulled them <laughs> for the meeting. I have to get my notebook out. Uh, so on the residential side of things, SVCE uh, gave two hundred and fifty-one thousand dollars in bill credits to Morgan Hill 
income qualified customers based on their fair status. And 349 uh, small businesses, which totaled to about $87,000. Uh, so all in all, we were just shy of about $340,000 worth of relief. So reach codes, um, Morgan Hill, very familiar with, uh, with all electric reach codes. Um, one of the leaders really among our, our 13 communities in this regard, uh, reach codes have now been uh, voted in by 10 of our 13 communities and a variety of different codes that depends uh, on the, the city, but really, really significant movement on this. Um, and we have one more city coming up soon here. So um, again, it's almost a, a clean sweep. But what this means, if you're not familiar with this, is um, all electric construction um, being required for new buildings. And um, this is something that we are supporting with an ongoing uh, technical assistance service for, um, for builders um, and for designers. So if there are um, needs in the community around, you know, gee, how do I go about building an all electric building? Um, you know, how should I be thinking about that in terms of, of design? Uh, please reach out to us and we can uh, help you with that. Uh, we can also work with the building department on uh, processes around uh, design review and, and so forth. So um, an important effort for, uh, for SVCE and, uh, and our member communities. Uh, next slide. Um, similarly, on the electric vehicle side, um, we went out and worked with some other local agencies to get a major state grant for uh, EV charging infrastructure. Um, across San Mateo County and, and Santa Clara County, we've lined up about $30 million in grant money, which we are matching. So that's um, $60 million going into new electric vehicle, public electric vehicle infrastructure. Um, for Silicon Valley Clean Energy, that is about, you know, our cut of that 60 is about, uh, about 12 million. So that's what customers in our service territory will be eligible for. And this is um, level two charging. That's the kind of charger that you would typically see at, say, a, um, um, you know, a store that you might go to or at a public parking garage. Um, it also applies to DC fast chargers. So these are you know, the heavy duty chargers that will put, you know, 100 or 150 miles of charge in your car in a matter of a uh, half hour, 45 minutes. So um, both of these types of, of charging systems can be funded through this um, Cal EVIP program. The program goes live in December. The money usually goes fast. So if you, um, if, if you know of, uh, multifamily property owners or commercial property owners that might be interested in this money. Again, please reach out to us and, uh, and, and we can work with you in a, a technical assistance program. We have a, a free technical assistance program to help you uh, design an installation and, and make that installation uh, ready for an application to the, to the Cali VIP program, which will actually fund the, the installation work. Next slide. Peyton, you wanna take this one? Peyton, did we lose you? He may be frozen there, so uh, <laughs> uh, until he comes back, yeah. I will, okay, you there? Oh, I have it unfrozen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I didn't mention at the uh, onset of the presentation, but I am a South County resident here in San Martin. So sometimes we have a bit of trouble with the internet. Uh, so the innovation on-ramp uh, is the arm of our programs division uh, that looks to support um, proofs of concept and demonstration projects. Uh, so we, we look specifically for the tough problems to solve uh, and then look to launch pilots uh, to see if you know, current cutting edge solutions are the kind of things that are going to help us to decarbonize. 
Uh, so one such project uh, that's in the works currently is for an app that works with EV chargers uh, to optimize for your specific time of use rate plan. So the app will look first for when it's the lowest cost during the day to charge while taking into consideration when you need to have a charge uh, uh, of a specific range on your car uh, and can also be optimized to look at when the grid is the cleanest uh, so that you're charging your car as cleanly as possible. Uh, so there are a few other projects in the works. You can definitely check out more at our website slash innovation. And that was the presentation that we prepared for you today. Um, we have contact information on this last slide and I believe uh, that we can circulate these slides with a mailing list. That won't be a problem at all. Uh, so at this time, we were going to open it up to any questions that there may be on the floor. Uh, and I think that, Tony, could I ask for your help in facilitating? I'm not sure what the best format for Q&A would be. Actually, normally, uh, Christina uh, takes care of that. Ah, ah. Uh, yes, I, I'd be happy to. Thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, so those that are on the, the call, um, you can either enter a question in the Q&A or the chat, or you can raise your uh, virtual hand, or if you're calling in from a phone, you may dial star nine. And so I'm looking at the chat and we have a chat from Jim. How much do they pay for the energy from my battery at night? <laughs> Don, <laughs> all right. Don, how would you address that? So uh, it depends on your rate. So um, <clears throat> a, a time of use rate will vary uh, in terms of what energy costs uh, at different hours of the day. Uh, energy is generally the most expensive between four and nine p.m. in the evening, and and then cheaper at other times during the day. But whatever that, that energy costs is what you would be paid back if you're putting power back onto the grid. So if you, um, if you, if you put power back onto the grid, if you have a solar system and put power back onto the grid at uh, 4 or 5 p.m. in the afternoon as the sun sets, that's, that's a good time to do it. Um, you're going to be getting, you know, again, it depends on your rate, but you might be getting, you know, 25 or 30 cents for that, that power um, at other times of the day, substantially less. Um, that's, that's per kilowatt hour, Don. Yes, per kilowatt hour. Thank you. Okay, looking for other questions, whether it be for SVCE or just any general questions that we can answer for you. And looking at Q&A from Greg, you mentioned electric heat pump water heaters to replace gas. What about heating? Uh, so those definitely play a critical role in our idea of the future fit home. Uh, they're more efficient than furnaces and can be cheaper to operate depending on your utility rate. Uh, at this time, we don't necessarily have a program, a, a rebate program in specific uh, for heat pump HVAC, uh, but that is actually something that we've been noodling on. And so stay tuned for future updates. Yeah, and one of the, the interesting things about heat pump HVAC is that it's, it's, it, it can be two things. It can be an air conditioner and it can be a heater. So you can replace what may may have traditionally been two devices, your air conditioner and your gas furnace with, with one device that, uh, that now accomplishes both of those things. Um, and since it uses heat pump technology, it's, it's very efficient for either heating or, or for cooling. So like Peyton says, we, we wanna work on a, on a program for that. And we're, we're also thinking maybe we can bundle some of these things. So, if you get a heat pump water heater, there's a certain incentive and you get additional money if you do uh, do an HVAC system uh, as a for instance, but we're still still in the process of, of cooking that one up. I can add to the, the heat pump water heater is a, actually a much bigger transition than, than going to uh, electric 
uh, heat with a, via a heat pump because if you have an air conditioner, it's fairly easy to, to do that. And so if, if you have a furnace that goes out and you're thinking of replacing it, um, now that would be the time to think about going and replacing your air conditioner as well with a heat pump unit that would do both things for you. Especially, you know, because if your furnace has gone out, then maybe your air conditioner is about to go out. It's a shame to replace both. Okay, we have a live caller, Patrick Campbell. Angie, if you could help us. Okay, Patrick, it looks like you are unmuted. Okay, Patrick, you are unmuted. I do see that you entered a question. Yeah, it's a double muting kind of thing. Ah, um, yes, okay. <laughs> and, and there's a secret double handshake that goes with it, but only the Zoom operator knows that. Um, can you explain the basics of transition to the Green Start program you referenced before from a PG&E customer perspective? So is it just a different rate that the PG&E billing brings to us because they still own us as a customer? Is that kind of the way that works? You want oh, to so, take that one? Pick? Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so when you transition as a customer, uh, rather than one page of detailed breakdown of your kilowatt hour usage, uh, you'll now have two. You'll have a page with PG&E delivery on the top banner and a page with SVCE generation on the top banner. Uh, within the PG&E page, there are some credits that are taken out of their total cost uh, that essentially absorb the cost of the SVCE generation. And we price our rates at a specific discount uh, to PG&E's generation rates. So by the time that you sandwich all these things together, uh, we're currently 4% less expensive on the generation side, which ends up for residents being about 2% less expensive uh, than the overall bill. And just, just one follow on. So <clears throat> the process for that is initiated from PG&E, correct? That's correct. So when a customer signs up for service within our service territory, the default is actually going to be SVCE. And a oh. customer would have to ask to remain on PG&E's generation service. But if I were a PG&E customer today, I, I have to opt out of PG&E with them. If you're currently a PG&E customer today, then yes, you would have to actively switch uh, to SVC. But, but Patrick, it's, it's, if you've been in Morgan Hill, you were, uh, when the transition came, you were automatically opted into SVC. So it's very possible that you're already an SVC customer and may not be aware of it. In these days of paperless bills, it's always hard to tell who the hell is <laughs> providing what. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, that was a public statement. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Patrick. Uh, we have a question from Greg. How practical would be geothermal heat pump? Um, great question. Um, I, I know that uh, th there have been some installations in, in different parts of the state. They've, um, I'd, I'd say they've been experimental is a big word, but um, you know, trying to figure out just just how good the value proposition is. It tends to be better in cold weather climates, and in a in a warm weather or warmer weather climate like the one we have, even in the winter time, uh, heat pumps generally perform uh, very well just using uh, using the ambient air. Uh, but you know, if you if you're if you have happen to have a cabin in the Colorado mountains or the Sierras, um, yeah, maybe maybe ground source heat pump could be a, a good option for you. Okay, any other questions for SVCE or for the city? I see one popping up here. Uh, David, sorry for the pointed question. It sounds like SVCE is really an electrical energy broker. SVCE buys power off the grid and then resells it to us. Is that about right? Tony, do you want to start on that one? Well, sure. How can I say no? The, uh, that, that's, that's not really uh, how I would characterize it at all for a number of reasons. 
The first being that rather than being a private sector broker, the SVC is an entity that we are uh, members of uh, and, and essentially own it. The communities together own SVCE as a, an agency. So it's right out of the gate, it's, it's a, a different thing. Uh, all of the, the profits and benefits of it get reinvested in the communities. There isn't uh, any private sector uh, involvement, so to speak, in the organization. With regard to how the flow of energy works, um, I'm going to ask them to give more detail, but in short, uh, no, they do far more than buy power off the grid and broker it. Go ahead, Don. Let's see. So we um, increasingly we are investing in and building um, dedicated renewable energy plants. So we've now signed contracts um, to build seven seven facilities. Um, that's five solar plus storage farms um, and, and two geothermal facilities. Getting back to that geothermal question. Um, and all told those, those will deliver about plus or minus 40% of the electricity demand in our service territory. And we're continuing to add new projects as we go. Um, of course, you'd, it, it takes time to develop the, you know, the capital backing and go through the procurement process and so forth. So um, when we first started it up, we did buy power from resources that were uh, already in place, um, but increasingly we're transitioning that to, uh, to dedicated resources that uh, uh, new additional resources that we're building. Um, so uh, hopefully that, that addresses the, the, the question. Yeah, there was a follow up. Um, so SVC doesn't own a wind farm or solar array. I think you addressed geothermal and solar, anything on wind? Working on it. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we actually had a, a large wind deal that uh, we had um, done the initial contracting for and then the deal fell through. Um, and these, this sometimes happens with these, uh, these big new projects. There was an issue getting the uh, the transmission lined up um, from that that facility, so it wasn't really a problem with the wind farm itself, but rather with the uh, the transmission lines to it. Um, so we we do regular solicitations. We have um, uh, one going on right now, and we're very actively looking for wind projects. It's getting harder to find wind projects. Um, if, just uh, maybe more information than you wanted to know, but uh, it, it, for whatever reason in California right now, there just isn't as much wind being developed as, as solar. Um, but it's a great question and we'd really like to diversify our portfolio. So we're actively looking, looking for that. And if, if I can add, there's a renewed and enhanced emphasis on looking for power that it isn't just available when the sun shines. So all of our new solar projects have a battery component, a storage component on site for the bean charge, and then it's made available when the sun goes down. Um, similarly, the geothermal are 24-7, uh, are resources that are operational 24-7. And the whole new um, push is looking for long duration storage. Uh, as we realize that if we want to decarbonize the grid, we need storage that's available you know, for 12 hours. Uh, so. That, that is all an emphasis that the SVC is working on very seriously. Tony, and we have a live question from Brian. And Brian, you are unmuted. Hi, Christina, Brian Fairclough. Good evening. Uh, this has been some valuable information and you're quite a enterprise and we got quite a bit of good information from you, uh, but I didn't hear where your investment dollars come from? Because uh, you're investing in quite a bit, so you must have some kind of a, a fun source. Uh, <laughs> and I'd be interested in understand where they are. Well, you're you're looking at them, um, our customers. Um, so um, we uh, we we provide power, right? Um, so we we charge customers for that power that we that revenue comes to us and we have to then go buy that power so that it can be provided to you um, and that's that's where the dollars come from for investing in these new solar and wind farms we're effectively 
um, looking into the future and, and committing those future revenues to construction of, of new facilities. Um, um, we mentioned the number earlier, uh, $1 billion in, in investment in new facilities being um, committed already. Um, on behalf of the, the 13 member communities and the 270,000 customers that we serve. So a number that people should feel pretty good about. I mean, this, this wouldn't have happened without our communities, uh, our 13 communities commitment to development of, of new renewables. It comes from all of us. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Brian. Uh, we have an anonymous attendee. Just a comment, if you watched Tesla's battery day yesterday, storage availability will be advancing quickly. Tony says thumbs up and I see the same from Peyton and Don. Yeah. All right. David Lister, uh, does SVCE pay PG&E for the transmission rights? Hmm. So we, you know, we do ultimately have to, you know, the power has to get from the, the facilities that we buy it from to our customers. Uh, so yes, we, we pay for that. Um, not all transmission is owned by PG&E. Um, there are other parties involved in that process. Um, then there's, there's transmission charges that we as customers pay PG&E um, on our bill. So on the, the transmission and distribution side of your, your bill, you're continuing, we're all continuing to pay T&D charges in general uh, to, to PG&E. It's kind of two, two answers to that question. <laughs> what, we, what we pay for the grid in general and then what we pay specifically to get power from, from resources that we've, um, we've contracted for or that we've um, established um, purchasing arrangements for. Okay, any further questions tonight? Not seeing any. So as far as upcoming meetings go, so we are meeting again on October the 8th, as well as October the 22nd. And then because of the holiday schedule, we'll just have one town hall in November at this point, and then one in December. And our next council meeting will be on Wednesday, October 21st. And with that, I want to just thank you, Dawn and Peyton, for joining us this evening and informing us and our community. And I'm seeing one chat. So before we go, just a thank you from the group. And uh, I will see uh, you all soon. Take care. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye. Bye. Bye.